So, if you want to know how to make your own dash, you've come to the right place because I'm gonna tell you how I made this dash right now. The ability to rocket forward or backward with their legs trailing after them as if firing a jetpack horizontally, though they usually aren't wearing one. When doing this, they will be able to travel a distance many times the length of their audience in a split of a second, better than any real life combat lung. Jesus, holy moly, they could have just say burst of movement speed in small period of time. <laughs> so I'm gonna prepare a character for us. Uh, it's gonna be under sprites square. I'm gonna name it zoom and our zoom should have rigid body component so rigid body 2d now he would just fall through our walls so we need to add a collider box collider 2d now let's create a script for our character i'm gonna name it zoom script i'm just gonna add a basic movement and jumping so we don't have a stationary character So basically I've added two float variables, horizontal and vertical. In our update loop, I am assigning via input class the horizontal axis and jump axis. And I also added a fixed update in which I am adding to our rigid body, which is a variable of type rigid body 2D and I am assigning get component rigid body 2d to our rb so in our fixed update we are adding force to our rb and we are creating a new vector which contains our horizontal value and also i'm adding a force with our vertical value which is our jump and the jump is a force mode impulse if we add our zoom script to our zoom character and try to press play we should be able to move to the sides and when i press space it's gonna be jumping so now that we have our character set up we can start working on our dash and we said that dash is a short burst of movement speed for that we're gonna need some kind of timer and i'm gonna use go routines for that if you want to know more about coroutines, you can click up there. If it's not up there yet, uh, there won't be a card, but hopefully in the future I'm gonna make a video about that. So we are gonna create a coroutine that is gonna be type of I enumerator. I'm gonna name it dash. It's just like a function, but it needs something to return. So we are gonna be yield return new wait for seconds let's say three for now so this basically means that if you have some code here and other code there if we call this dash coroutine this piece of code is gonna be executed this is gonna wait for three seconds which we, which we set here and after three seconds this code will be executed for our timer we can use uh, values like duration of our dash so dash duration and i'm gonna duplicate that and this is gonna be our dash cooldown of course we don't have any of those values yet so we can add arguments to our dash coroutine so it's going to be float dash duration and float dash cooldown. I'm going to add some debugging value so you can see it more clearly. So this is going to tell us when we started our coroutine and each other debug is going to tell us how much time passed since that. To test our coroutine, we're going to need to start it. So in our start method, we're going to be writing 
start coroutine and in parameters we're gonna need to pass our dash so dash and it's gonna need two values that we specified that we are gonna have two parameters so let's say the first is gonna be two and the second is gonna be five so now in the start our curtain should be started so this piece of code should be executed if I press play we should have our zero time which was our first debug this was the start of the coroutine since we started in start method it's at the start of the game so that's why it's zero so after two seconds this piece of code is has been executed and since we passed five as the second parameter we waited another five seconds and this piece of code has been executed so we got three debugs, one at the start of the coroutine, one after two seconds, and after that, after five seconds, the last one. The best practice for coroutines is to stop any coroutine that might be running at the time that we want to call another one. So if our dash is already running and we want to call another dash, we should stop the previous dash. To do so, we can create our I enumerate the value. I'm gonna name it dash coroutine. And in our start, we are not gonna be starting dash, but we are gonna be starting our dash coroutine that we just specified. Of course, we need to say that our dash coroutine is the dash I enumerator and of course when we're trying to call another routine we need to stop the previous one so if dash coroutine is not null we're gonna be stopping the dash coroutine so something like this so so far we have our timer but uh, it's not doing anything so let's add two bool values, which is going to be is dashing and can dash. And in our IE numerator, we are going to set is dashing to true. Since when we start our dash coroutine, we are going to be dashing. And after the dash duration, we are going to set the same value to false. Also, when we start dashing, or when we start our dash coroutine, we're gonna set can dash to false. Since when we are dashing, we don't want to start another dash. And after our dash cooldown, we're gonna set can dash back to true. So with those two values, now we know if we are dashing or if we can dash again. I'm also going to set a default value for our can dash value. I'm going to set it to true because we want to be able to dash at the beginning. Now we can ask in our update if we are pressing left shift. I choose, I've chosen left shift for our input. So input dot get key down and we're gonna pass key code there and the key code is gonna be left shift like this and we are gonna move our coroutine code to our newly created condition like this. So this would just ask if we are pressing a left shift our coroutine will be started. And we also want to know if we can dash at that time. So I'm going to add another condition to our if statement. So if can dash is true. So we are asking if you're pressing left shift. And also if can dash is true, we're going to start our coroutine. And in our coroutine, we are just setting is dashing to true. And 
after the dash duration is dashing is going to be false and can dash is going to be false until the dash cooldown is done where we set can dash back to true and after that we're going to be able to dash again so now we know exactly when are we dashing and we can use that in our fixed update so in our fixed update we can ask if we are dashing we're going to be adding some force to our character so rb dot add force i'm going to create a new vector and it's going to be force mode type impulse And the vector, we can say for now, it's going to be 10, 0. So let's try that. If I try to press shift, you can see our cube just disappeared from the scene. That's because we are not stopping at the end of the dash. So in our coroutine, after the dash duration, we can set the velocity of our rigid body to 0. Like this, we are setting the velocity to vector 2.0. Also, I forgot that we, we've set our dash duration to 2 seconds. That's too much. So I'm going to put, let's say, 0.1f. This should be fine. Let's try that again. So if I press shift, we dash to the right direction. But we cannot dash to the left. That's because I hard-coded a vector 10O to our add force. So we need some kind of value that is going to tell us if we are facing left or right. So let's create a float value named direction. And our direction is going to be 1 as a default. And in our update loop, we are going to be asking if our horizontal input is not zero. You're going to assign the horizontal value to our direction. So direction equals horizontal. So direction is always going to be minus one or one because we are using input get axis raw. And we can replace in our fixed update. We can replace our 10 with direction and we are going to multiply that with some value I'm going to put 10 there if we try that we can dash even to the left uh, I cannot dash again because there's 5 seconds cooldown so if I try to dash after 5 seconds I can dash even to the right if I try to dash in the air I can still do that, that's fine. I'm gonna lower the cooldown for this. I'm gonna put zero seconds there. The only problem that we now have is when we are falling down and I try to dash, you could, you could probably see that we weren't dashing straight but we are dashing slightly down. That's because our character is still affected by gravity. So we can set our gravity of the character when we are dashing to zero. So when we start our dash coroutine, we can also say that rb dot gravity scale is gonna be zero. And also we need to change it back after we are done with the duration of the dash. But since we have no reference to the original gravity, we need to create it first. So I'm gonna create another float named normal gravity and at the start we're gonna set to our normal gravity the rb.gravity scale so when we start our game our normal gravity is gonna be stored in this value and when we zero out our gravity at the beginning of our dash we're gonna be setting the gravity back to the normal so rb.gravityscale 
and we're gonna set it to normal gravity. We are not done yet because we reset it, the value to zero, but we are still falling down. So we are gonna be still facing slightly to the left or slightly to the right downwards. So we need to reset the vector of our rigid body to zero. So we're gonna be setting rb.velocity to vector.0 like this. If we try it now, I'm falling, I pressed shift and you could see that we were dashing in the straight line. I can do that even to the other side. And when I try to move on the ground and press shift, you can see that I, I kind of get stuck at the end. And that's because we are zeroing out our velocity. If you want, you can create something similar to our gravity scale when we have our original gravity scale, but with a velocity or the vector. So when we are moving to the side, we have some kind of velocity and we can take that velocity right when we are pressing shift and apply it at the end of the dash so we don't get stuck at the end. For that we can create a vector named original velocity and we are gonna assign our velocity of the rigid body, so rb.velocity and when we are done with our dash, we, we are not going to be zeroing out the velocity. We are just going to set the velocity back to the original velocity. So when I'm moving to the right and press shift, you can see that I'm quite smoothly continuing. And when I'm pressing shift even in the air, I'm continuing pretty nicely. And that's just all to it, you know. If you want to alter the speed of the dash, you can uh, make the vector of our adding force slightly bigger, or you can make the dash slightly longer with uh, adding more time in our dash coroutine. And you can uh, change the cooldown of the dash for value of your choosing. So I hope you learned something from this video or that it was helpful in some case for you. If it did help you, you can let me know down below in the comments. If you want to see more videos from me in the future, you can press the subscribe slash bell button. And I'm gonna see you next time. Bye!